The Eureka Stockade and Gold Rush in Ballarat is intended for Level 4 learning. We would like to acknowledge and pay our respects to the traditional owners of the land, the Wadarong and the Dajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajarajar
as his wife had become ill in May of 1854. In June of 1854, a new governor, Sir Charles Popham, arrived. Initially, the Myers were pleased as he had declared there would be an inquiry into the licensing laws. By the October, Governor Hotham became aware that the colony was £2 million in debt and the licences were very important to continue to ensure colony growth. At that time, 77,000 miners were on the goldfield. However, only 44,000 had purchased licences. He ordered that licences needed to be checked twice a week. This made miners angrier and angrier. The miners were furious about the license laws and it did not take much to stir up trouble. The murder of a digger on the 7th of October started the events that would lead up to the Eureka Stockade. The suspect was James Bentley. He owned the hotel and was friends with the local magistrate and was released without charge. The diggers were outraged and a protest meeting was held outside the hotel on the afternoon of the 17th of October. That night, the hotel burnt down and the diggers were arrested. Governor Hotham had James Bentley retried, and he was found guilty, but this was not enough for the miners. During this time, the Eureka flag was created, depicting the Southern Cross. There are several theories on who made this. One is a group of women, Anastasia Hayes, Anastasia Withers, and Anne Duke, all who had connections to the diggers or the bailout reform league. The flag is impressive, 4 metres long by 2.6 metres. On the 30th of November, Gold Commissioner Robert Reed informed the diggers are again burning the license. He orders no mercy and to arrest anyone without a license. The troopers also shoot the diggers. This was the final straw. At 4 p.m. on the same day, the diggers have a meeting where Peter Lalo is encouraged to be the leader. Peter Lalo was from a family of Irish freedom fighters. He spoke to diggers about fighting for their rights under the Eureka flag with the Southern Cross driving the fight for justice. He invited his fellow diggers to kneel under the Southern Cross and to swear on them. We swear by the Southern Cross to stand truly by each other and fight to defend our rights and liberties. They agreed to meet at Bakery Hill on the next morning and leave to gather weapons. On the 1st of December, about 1,500 miners marched to the diggings and they were stockaded from wood and overturned carts. On Saturday night, only about 120 men remained the stockade. Commissioner Reed and over 270 men decided to attack just before daylight on the 3rd of December. At dawn, the battle commenced. It lasted just 15 minutes. 25 miners and six troopers were killed. Peter Layla, was the leader, was shot but still alive. The Eureka flag was taken down and parts of it souvenired. Hundreds of miners were arrested and 13 men were charged with treason. At the time, Peter Laylor was at Father Smith's house. He had been wounded in the arm and his arm had to be amputated. He was then taken to Geelong and hidden for his recovery. Governor Hotham put out an, an award for his capture as a rebel for 200 pounds, but no one betrayed Peter. The trial of the miner was held in February and March 1855 and all the miners were found not guilty. Henry Seacamp, the editor of the Ballarat Times, was the only person jailed. He was found guilty of printing the notices for the miner meetings and printing sympathetic newspaper articles. He was not present at the Eureka stockade nor did he fire a single shot. March 1855, Governor Hotham set up an inquiry into the miners' requests for changes in the law. The inquiry recommended the following and all were adopted. Gold licences, one pound per year, no licence inspections, and the right to vote. Also in 1855, the, vi the miners voted Peter Laylaw into the Legislative Council. The Eureka Stockade had effects that spread across the nation. It showed that working people would fight for their rights. Not only did the Eureka Stockade change conditions for the diggers and improve life on the goldfields, it was the start of the democratic movement in Australia.